everybody, it's Kendra here. Welcome back to this DIY Mom Life. Here on my channel you will find a variety of sewing tutorials, knitting videos, projects I have on the go as they relate to me. I have two children and a third one on the way and I like to make functional DIY projects, things like that, that I can use in my everyday life. If that is of interest to you, please consider subscribing and I'd love to see you again here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this top, which is a cowl neck tunic length sweater knit sort of sew and top. It is made out of a sweater knit fabric. However, it would work for a variety of fabrics as long as they have some stretch to them. And I decided to make this piece because I'm right now in the mindset of wanting to make things that work um, for me at this time, late pregnancy, and then also will transition to the postpartum period and beyond. Um, and something like this is not maybe what I would consider my first choice, just because it does have the high neckline. And when I'm thinking of this period, I want nursing access. And um, sometimes that always means really low cut tops. So I decided to make a really flowy top that's just long enough that I could wear it with leggings but at the same time I'd have lots of room to be able to pull it up and wear a nursing tank top underneath um, and still feed just by pulling it up and having it loose enough that it wouldn't stretch out of place or something by doing that all the time coming up here. It's also really nice in terms of being flowy that there's lots of room for a belly. I'm 32 weeks right now but there's room to grow still and I think it won't get stretched out because I did leave a lot of extra ease in it and I think it will be good um, in the coming months when my size changes as well. So I'm going to take you through as I cut and sew this top. I use two meters of the sweater knit fabric. So I am using just a top that is about the right length and that has long sleeves as my model, as my guide, just to kind of cut around. And I'm going to cut around. I want to watch the neckline. I don't want it to cut too big because it will, with that heavy cowl on, will stretch it out. Um, but at the same time, I'm going small and then I know I can cut later if I want it a little bit larger. So I'm going to cut and I'm doing a drop sleeve on this. And again, it's just for that kind of looser look. And you can just kind of guess how far you want it. I fold up my sleeve um, to give my guideline for cutting. And I do pull it in a little bit at the waist um, and then flare it out at the bottom. Want to leave again, just have that really wide billowy sort of look on the body of the dress. And then I'm, and then I'm going to give it a nice fitted sleeve to give it some shaping and um, it just kind of balances it off really nice. So once I cut that out, I am going to use that as a model for doing my second piece. So if that was the back, I'm now going to trace around it to do my front, again, being mindful of the way this stretches. And when you get to the neckline, cut it a little bit lower in the front than in the back, but you still want those shoulder seams to line up. Our first sewing seam is going to be the shoulder seam, so go from that point where the neckline meets the shoulders and all the way down to the edge of your sleeve. I tried it on and I found it was maybe a little bit too close to my neck so I just gave it a little trim, made my neck hole a little bit larger and know that it will work out pretty well once I attach the cowl. Next up I am going to take the piece that I just sewed and hold it over my fabric using my long sleeve top as a guide and if you don't have a long sleeve top measure your arm and it will give you the same thing. I want to subtract the amount of drop sleeve that I left on my main body of the pattern piece and measure how long I need to have a long sleeve. I'm just cutting a rectangle shape and I'm cutting it on the fold here, again, mindful of stretch, making sure that it's going around your arm. So Not once you have the one cut, use that as a guide for cutting your second sleeve. Next up, I am going to put my shirt again, right sides together and sew my side seams. So from the bottom of the armhole all the way down until the hem on each side. Now we're going to sew up our sleeve and we do that by putting right sides together again and we're just keeping it on the fold but folding it right sides together and sewing the length of it so you should have two long skinny tubes. Now with your main body piece inside out we are going to take the sleeve put it right way out so we can put the right sides together again 
And by doing this, we can insert the sleeve into the body and pin it around. So I want to line up my seam so that the seam I, on my sleeve matches up with the underarm of your armhole. If you put it on the top, it's gonna to be really visible. So just pay attention to that. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna repeat this on the other side. Again, just inserting the sleeve into the body hole, the armhole, pinning it and doing a little seam all the way around. Next up, try it on, see how it fits, see how you like those sleeves. If your sleeves are really long, you may need to trim them. I'm just going to hem it by folding it under twice and doing a straight stitch all the way around. However, you can also cut um, a strip and fold it in half and do a binding piece. It's really flexible on how you want to finish your sleeves. So I am now going to measure the width of my neck hole. And you can see here, I am just measuring it the once and then I'm going to double that measurement and really I'm gonna cut it on the fold to give me a full circle, a tube, because I'm measuring it flat. So you can see here, I am folding over my fabric, measuring that width, and the length is really flexible. I made this one quite long because I know it's a really thin fabric and it will be drapey and I wanted that full scarf feel on it. However, you can go really narrow and you can find cowl neck tops that have a really narrow cowl and they look really nice too. And if you have a bulkier fabric, you just wanna be mindful because if it gets too tight around your neck, I don't want you to feel like you're joking. So, so as you're measuring and deciding how long you want it, keep in mind that we are going to fold it lengthwise as well. So you want it twice as long as your final cowl. I made a long skinny tube. I sewed up the length um, with my serger again. And then when I folded it over, I could kind of measure and see how it felt before attaching it to the body of my top. Okay. And so when you're happy with how long it is, we are going to attach it to the body of our sweater. And we do this by keeping it folded so that it is the right side, both inside and outside. Um, your seam is totally enclosed. And we are going to keep, again, the part you want on the outside, the right sides together. Line up that seam on your cowl with the back of your sweater. And I do this just by folding to find the center back. Putting in a pin, matching up the center fronts, the side seams and then putting in a few more pins all the way around and taking it to the serger and making sure that as you are sewing you are having the neck of the body as well as both parts of the cowl, the inner and the outer. Complete that seam going all the way around and it should now have an attached cowl on it. So I decided to do this curved hem I did need to be mindful not to do too steep of a curve because hemming anything circular gets pretty tricky. Um, but when it's a gentle curve like this, it is manageable. I know this, I, or I think this would look really nice with like a high-low uh, hem as well. But I decided to stick with this curved hem. And again, same as with the armholes, I just folded over twice and hemmed with a straight stitch. I just used a longer length of stitch to give it just a little bit of wiggle room um, because it's not a super high stretch area, but I thought this way it would prevent popping stitches. All right, turn it right way out, trim all of your little ends and you should be ready to wear your garment. This is a very simple top, and yet I think it looks really nice. I think it will be great, like I said, through these different stages, and even if you're not pregnant, even if you're not breastfeeding or postpartum or anything else, I think that this exact same tutorial would work for you. You can always just take it in a little at the sides if it's too billowy, if it's too big for you. Um, you don't have to leave room for pregnancy or anything else. However, it's just a normal top that is versatile and works through these stages. If you have any questions about this, please leave me a comment down below. I will do my best to answer. I'm not an expert seamstress or anything else. I just have a lot of fun putting together tops, putting together clothing items, and um, trying to find things that will work for me. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye.